that we get a push up in release dates. How are you guys able to make this happen? Uh, we, we happen to be ready. And uh, we knew we wanted to get this game into the fans as uh, early as possible. We saw the window, we took it, and uh, hence our August 21st date. We are looking forward to it. But I'll tell you right now, it takes a lot. Because War for Cybertron, this came out in 2010, blew away Transformers fans. It was just like original storyline, all sorts of features and everything like that. I mean, this must have been a daunting task for High Moon Studios to go all out and just make the sequel everything it could be. I mean, just how much effort went into that? Uh, a huge amount of effort, but you know what? Uh, the fans uh, love this property so much, and they're very vocal about uh, what they're looking for in the next game, that they were a huge help in us uh, deciding where we wanted to spend our resources, and it, and it broke down to a, even a more epic story, more variety in gameplay, um, and, uh, and we're delivering that on all fronts. Yeah, and this is actually uh, something we learned in multiplayer tonight, because we're actually seeing multiplayer for the first time tonight, but it's not just Autobots and Decepticons. You're actually also involving Insecticons and Dinobots. You're just everybody's getting in on the frenzy. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, we're we're very happy. We we weren't sure if we could get the uh, the Dinobots and Insecticons in there. It was a, a last minute thing that uh, that our our team proved that we could do. Uh, we made it happen, and we're very happy about that inclusion. Now the question is, will there be balance in the gameplay with these robots? I mean, well, obviously the Dinobots have some sort of balance against Decepticons. I mean, nobody will have an advantage when it comes to picking a certain team in multiplayer, right? When it comes to multiplayer, we're very, very careful in how we balance the game. We want to give everybody uh, an, an equal shot in customizing their own guy and, uh, and bringing what they have to the table. Also, and this is a first for the series. You're also introducing host migration. This has been like a highly in-demand feature for the game. But tell us how you got that incorporated. Well, we felt like we did a lot of uh, great things on the first War for Cybertron multiplayer. It was a core, um, uh, great core mechanics. It was balanced very well, and post migration was just one of, like I said, it was uh, requested by the fans. It was just another step in the evolution, and uh, it's a great step forward in making this a better and richer multiplayer experience. And also, uh, in addition to that, you introduced this new escalation mode. Well, it's not new. Obviously, its fans are used to it and everything like that, but they're happy to see it return, like co-op based battle. Tell us more about that. Uh, Escalation was so popular from War for Cybertron, you get to play as an Iconics, and uh, it returns better than ever in Fall of Cybertron. Absolutely. Now, how many players can take part in that, though? In Escalation, it's a four-player match. Do not play by yourself. You're going to get your butt kicked. Get your friends together, and you each have a role to play. You each have a class that you... Uh, have to play. So you've got your healer, you've got you know, your, your big tough guy. It's uh, Every role is important to surviving uh, escalation mode. Oh, absolutely. There's different roles that you have to play in regards to like just keeping everything balanced. I mean, it's, it's something you seldom see in multiplayer games. It's like a certain balance. Usually it's just like, you take this gun and then you take this gun. But no, this is actually has some balance to it, doesn't it? Escalation, uh, teamwork is, is the name of the game for escalation. And it's so much fun to, to get to play your, your favorite iconic character on top of that. It's it's good. It's a good time. Well, yeah, we got to talk about the customization. And we took a, a brief look at this earlier this year. Just like, you know, different options you could have for your Transformers and everything like that. But it really goes deep. It's not just a matter of, like, picking a skin and going. There is, like, m parts you can manipulate, everything like that, right? Uh, pretty much everything you want to change or customize on, on uh, your own character that you're creating, you, you can. Um, players have never given have been given this uh, this amount of customization before. It, it feels endless when you, you'll, it, you'll play for hours just creating your own guy. It's fantastic. Not to mention the fact that you can actually give them a matte finish. It doesn't have to be just like dull metal. It, it, you could be like a shiny bot. If, forgive the term, but you could be a shiny bot if you, if you wanted. Yeah, you have whatever colors you pick. Uh, you, can, you can adjust how much uh, metallic look there is glinting off your guy. You can go like full concept car mode if you want, or you can you know keep it plain Jane like G1. See, I just want to play as a shiny dinosaur. I don't know why. I just do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big uh, dino bot fan myself. I hear that. I hear that. Now, um, on, on top of all this, on top of the multiplayer mode, on top of Escalation, there is a deep single-player campaign. That talks about like your escape from Cybertron or what you're trying to do in terms of, like the planet falling apart. You got Metroplex, who's this big 20-ton Autobot that can destroy everything. Just like a lot of work must have gone into the single-player campaign as well. We spent a lot of time on the story, uh, both uh, you know getting Hasbro's blessing off it, bringing the Dinobots back into the fold. Um, they were 
very involved with that. Everything we do is is blessed with with Hasbro, um, you know, their, their Bible, if you will. So it fits neatly into the universe, and uh, they give us a lot of creative freedom to uh, to make that story and create it. And from the get go, we wanted to create an epic story that just pulls at the heartstrings almost. You know, uh, they're big robots, they fight, they battle, they bash each other, but they also feel, too, and this is the end of their world. You get to experience that as a player. Not to mention the fact is you're involving Grimlock, like a big fan favorite. In fact, this Saturday at the panel, you're going to have Greg Berger, the voice of Grimlock, at the panel. So we're, we're just jazzed to, like, hear more about his involvement in the game. Yeah, our, our Grimlock, uh, for this game, we took a much more... Uh, a much darker approach, a much more tr a mature approach. So, uh, G1 fans remember Grimlock. He was, you know, in, in the cartoons, he was almost a Forrest Gump, right? He, who, who could kill you as soon as he looked at you. Our Grimlock is a bit more of a tortured soul. And Greg Berger, boy, he did a fantastic job uh, giving the G1 fans what they want, but also maturing that performance into something special. And final question here. I mean, do you have? a favorite Transformer. I know it's so hard between like Optimus and Grimlock and everything like that, but do you have a particular favorite amongst the lexicon of Transformer characters? Uh, boy, that's, that's a tough question. From the, the vantage point of our game, it is a really tough question because each chapter and uh, of our game, you get to play a different one. It's a wide variety and there's something I really love about each experience. But if I had to choose, I'm an Optimus Prime guy through and through. See, Grimlock might be bitter with you. He might be going, me, Grimlock, not happy. He does something like that. I hope I'm not sitting next to him in the panel. <laughs> Good luck surviving, sir. We'll see you then. <laughs> Thank you very much.